today's session is really about trying to help define a problem and why should we define a problem huh? and how do having defined a problem how do you write a proposition for it why entrepreneurship why now so is that india is a growing economy indians are going from middle class to rich from lower middle class to middle class we have a large catchment of opportunity opportunity is defined as gap in the market opportunity is gap in the market unmet demand opportunity uh, gap in the market Supposing demand has been met, how do you still have opportunity? There is surplus to spend. लोगों के पास पैसा है, people has money, so you have to create a virtual demand, or you have to create a I'll call it a higher order demand, a virtual demand or a higher order demand. You've just made my life easy. I'm just going to give you some concepts and frameworks for the same thing, really. So my reason to do this is actually a lot of uh, young people look at the chart on the left. which is the names of all the unicorns a unicorn is a word that is used for companies which have valuation higher than 1 billion dollars huh valuation higher than 1 billion dollars we'll go at every word 1 billion dollars is clear anybody can convert that into indian rupees 8000 8000 thousand. Thousand crores is as close as you can get you should always take a round number today can be 79.5 and tomorrow can be 89.2 i don't care 80 is a good enough number so 8000 crores what is the meaning of the word valuation so if we were to sell the company today we should get that much money do you know what is the value of the house you live in apartment or house or tenement or plot or whatever you know what is the value because the market tells you if you live in i don't know where you live in in pawai then it is 10000 rupees a square feet which is cannot be i'm just giving a number and if i multiply it by 700 square feet i know the value of the the valuation of the property it is not as easy to tell you what is the valuation of a company especially a young startup company which is why investors can be varying from 1 billion to 100 million for the same and we'll come to some of that that's not so important to me But the reason i show this slide is in the year 2021 50 indian companies 50 indian startups became unicorns 50 unicorns were created in india last year was 21 totally we have about 110 so that's a large number of companies which in the last 10 years have gone from zero startup means they started at zero and today are worth 8000 crores that's like huge okay and for me the right hand side is the reason why i like entrepreneurship can you pick one of your favorite and i'll explain that uh, company to you so swiggy and zomato are worth uh, 8000 crores each but for me they are people who have generated 300000 to 500000 jobs for me that is the value that a startup brings in can i tell you about misho if you don't know misho is like uh, flipkart and snapdeal and uh, amazon and a version the reason why i have them here is because they enabled 10 million entrepreneurs mostly women to create their own professional identity and grow their business yeah folks who used to be at home and stitch kurtas like i'm wearing or sell shoes or sell handbags or whatever misho gave them an opportunity to make it an actual business and reach a large number of customers yeah so misho is it a social company is it capitalistic is swiggy or zomato social or capitalist are they more interested in bringing up uh, poorer people or are they interested in making money of the richer people is it either or ah it's not either or life nothing is either or like depends it's not black and white as you grow older questions will not be answered in black and white that's why the book is called 50 shades of gray yeah so <laughs> there are more gray scales and there will be black and white if you had all the resources in the world what is the problem that you see today that you really want to solve i used to work at britannia and every time i went on holiday to a hill station it would bother me so much that our good day rappers would be all over the hill station i really wish there was a waste management system or i really wish there was a reusable packaging system that we could afford at 10 rupees or 15 rupees that good day was priced at 
Okay. That would be my reason to address the issue. The small reason to do this exercise was to make you realize that all of you want to solve a problem which is a socialist problem. Waste management is not a rich man's problem or a poor man's problem. It's an every man's problem, man, woman, child problem. What was the second one? Transportation. Or is that traffic? I mean, so I want teleportation so that I can reach uh, Chetna Foods to eat my lunch. Because otherwise, it will take me two hours to go from here to Kavi's restaurant in uh, South Bombay. Yeah. So, is teleportation a problem or a solution? Solution. But we are not yet discussing solutions. I shouldn't have said teleportation. So, all of you, I think, would like to solve a social problem. Now, let's ask, do you want to solve it in a capitalist way or a socialist way? Capitalism is a form of economy where individuals take risk and make profit. Individuals take risk and make take profit. Socialism is where the state, the state or the government or whatever you want to call, puts in combined resources and shares combined profit. While the problems you want to solve are social, the method to solve will most likely be capitalist. You want to solve social problems because that's what you have seen. Many of you actually did not say education. A lot of people who come to my classes would first say education. Increasingly, students are telling me about emotional and mental well-being, that they want to solve the mental health issues or the emotional health issues <coughs> that they are seeing around. And the reason to do it in a capitalist way is for sustainability. If you do not make money, you will close the company. You may have the desire to solve the world's problem. But if you don't make profit, and profit can be 1 rupee, 10 rupee, 10,000 rupees, 10 crore rupees, not defined. But if you don't make money, you will not sustain. So, all of us want to solve social problems, but we will solve it in a capitalist way, and which is why I showed you examples of Misho, and I showed you Swiggy Stroke Zomato. Ola, the number of people who got hired to drive between Ola and Uber, and lending card, car deco, etc., are just more examples of the same. So, entrepreneurship now, best time in the world. Really the best time in the world. Uh, if I say that in 1991, we were lucky that there were no dearth of jobs. Today, y'all are in a world where there is no dearth of opportunities to create startups from. And uh, one question if you do a startup and it doesn't work after, say, one year, two years, four years, do you think that the world will think of you as a failed entrepreneur? No, you are not a failed entrepreneur. That enterprise may have failed at that point of time, but there was learning in it. You learned from it, somebody else learned from it, somebody else may do it differently. So there is no failed entrepreneur. There is only a failed entrepreneurial idea. Yeah? And companies like mine, and I told you the companies I worked for, I'd hire you if you had done an entrepreneurship exercise more than if you had come from McKinsey. Uh, given same profile, or whatever, same profile to nahi hai, McKinsey and entrepreneur, but the value of two years of a startup is higher than the value of two years at McKinsey. And take this from someone, I used to go to every campus to hire from the whatever, 2000 to the 2020 period, right? So take a shot, take a shot, work with friends, learn something new, and you'll find that it works out better for you in the long run. This is my personal story of why entrepreneurship. I graduated, I told you, in the 80s, late 80, early 90s. 1989 is when India opened up to the IT uh, majors in the world. They used to say that if you're any engineer, Infosys has a job for you. Baki ka pata nahi, Infosys pe chale jao, jane ki bhi sarat nahi hai, send them your uh, CV. Huh? And doesn't matter whether you wear shoes or you wear loafers or you wear those blue and white bata chappals, Infosys will give you a job. Huh? That was 1990. And here just see, in this is the number of people that they employ, which is four and a half million people. Our projections for now are that we'll employ three and a half million people in startups. Okay. This is a slide by uh, ex Infosian, which is uh, Mohandas Pai, used to be the CFO for uh, Infosys. So that's another reason to look at the entrepreneurial opportunity itself. How do you define the problem? How do you identify an opportunity? I think you said unmet need. 
you said unmet need and somebody said gap in the market those are the two i heard so tell me let's take a need waste management is it burning so stubble burning is actually burning need i mean this was just a pun burning need means it's a very high need uh, i keep telling people i am very um, i look at people who have glasses and uh, their glasses fog out so i once asked somebody why don't you make a wiper uh, wiper to do your fogging out huh? because i have seen people look at it and and whatever to clean it up nicely or whatever and says so is that a need maybe 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 is it burning for some people don't know we don't know we haven't asked so we don't know but if you are if i'm able to tell you a need will you tell whether it's burning or not you cannot define a problem without defining who the problem is for okay so is swiggy a burning need it doesn't feel like na then how did we all adopt to it it was probably a burning need for some people in uh, covid it turned out to be a burning need because you could not go to eat at a restaurant and uh, you were cooking all the time i mean i was cooking all the time and i don't know how to cook and i was doing jhadu all the time those few times that i ordered swiggy and i sanitized upar se khana imagine you are putting sanitizer on khana what and all we were doing in that time but that was the easiest nicest happiest time of that day for yeah so whether it, it was not burning from a if it wasn't there would life have gone on yes life would have gone on but it made my life so much easier by providing that opportunity and after you get used to something and the next question after burning what is the next question big enough opportunity are you able to judge is it a big enough opportunity is solid waste management in um, um delhi or punjab in um, october november december a burning need reasonably huh burning need is it large yeah it is large because there's three big states that are involved with it huh it impacts three big states aqi goes from from 300 to 600 or something in delhi in that time so it's a so many of these you will have answers chat gpt will give you an answer provided you ask the right question if you ask the question is it a large opportunity chat gpt will give you four pages in very authoritative sounding english now authoritative sounding english doesn't make it right huh it doesn't make it right so you have to ask it the right question you shouldn't ask a open ended question like is it a large opportunity you have to ask what is the size of the opportunity or how many people in north india does stubble burning impact or what percentage of people in north india does stubble burning impact this my questions get better what i wanted to highlight was that my quality of questions got better i first asked open ended question is it large opportunity how do you gauge yes no black white oranges apples you don't know how the answer is the next question i asked was how many people or how many individuals in north india are impacted by this problem then i asked an even sharper question i said what percentage of people in north india are impacted by this problem so then you know the answer to the huh? so but chat gpt just be careful about the kind of question that you ask otherwise you'll get nice long reports so here is a definition of needs it's called maslow's hierarchy it basically says are human needs basic or higher order huh? okay let's take a category that you all know so what is a basic phone and it can be a phone or it can be a service it does not have to be a handset we are using internet or phones what is a lower order what what is the basic need that phone satisfy the basic feature of a phone or the basic purpose that we designed a mobile phone for was to call I must tell you the story of motorola motorola was amongst the earliest mobile phones and their problem statement their problem statement was some day we will give phone numbers to human beings and not to locations i don't think other than kavi anybody even understands what i said the landlines that we used to have their phone numbers were given to a physical location my house it was whatever e405 raja residency kurumangla bangalore they said some day and they cracked this problem statement 
seven years before they got the mobile phone. But it was as tight as that. So when you define your problem, whether it is uh, uh, e-yantra as a startup or e-yantra um, lab as a startup or the G20, whatever problem has been given to you, the definition should be both as simple and as evocative. Evocative matlab inspirational means I'd like to solve a problem like that. Okay. So the basic need in a mobile phone is calling. We are beyond that. Do you know of a safety need of a mobile phone? Anyone here who wants to tell me a safety need in a mobile phone? Consumer's point of view, I use a Uber feature called share location. Uh, how, I don't know how many of you use a Uber feature. I think Ola must be also having the feature. Or WhatsApp has the feature. Uh, so when I go from A place to B place at 11 in the night, whoever, my brother, husband, son, don't, I mean, or sister or somebody, whoever's place I'm going to, whoever's waiting for me, I'll make sure they have my uh, current location. Is that a phone feature? What need does it serve? A safety need. So is that higher order, lower order? For women, it's a very lower order need, meaning very basic need. Not lower order doesn't mean not important. Low order means most important. Jab tak wo satisfy nahi hota, you wouldn't go to the next level. Yeah, till so in food, I worked a long time in food. The most fundamental need in food is what? Hygiene? No, not salt. Uh, uh, need. Why do we eat? Why do we eat? Energy, paid bharna. Paid bharna, energy. Energy is the most basic need. What is the next need after your pet is taste? Taste. Hygiene is, I'll come to hygiene. I mean, we all eat pani puri and all. So, pani puri and all, no, no hygiene, but lots of taste. Huh? So, after we have filled our stomach and have filled our energy need, we want taste. And then, nutrition, nutrition sometimes comes before, sometimes comes after. But we have eaten too much and now we need to eat less. So, we say, let's eat healthy food. Let's remove the sugar, let's remove the salt, let's remove the oil, let's remove the taste and then there is only health food left. But that's the, that's the pyramid in food. You pay your most money for up or down? Up. Do you satisfy? Do you, where do you serve the maximum number of customers? Down. Huh? So that's your choice. Do you want to solve a social problem? which means you solve a basic physiological need. You get to address a large audience. Largest number of customers at the bottom or as you go to the top? Bottom. Huh? And where is the money to be made? So they say that in the mobile phone market, Apple sells perhaps by volume one third, but revenue is more than half and profit is more than 80%. So they sell 30% of the number of handsets. They sell 60% or 55% of the revenue of handsets. And they sell 80% of profit of that. And this rule, unfortunately, is true. It operates in many categories. Can you get right to the top? What is the self-actualization need in phones, in communication? I'm tired of all this WhatsApp and Facebook and having 800 people text me and being in some 38 groups and being admin for some 15 groups and worrying ki kiska message kab delete karo, who is saying what foul stuff at what point of time. So after I've reached Nirvana, I don't want a data phone. I'm done. I'm done with data phones. I just want that Nokia simple 3210 back. Huh? And that also, that phone number will only be with some one or two people. If they want, they will call me, no texting, no data, okay? So this is just to paint a picture. Huh? So at that point, should Nokia sell 3210 cheap or expensive? Expensive. Yes. It may not be 3210. It may be 3210i or whatever they call it. Huh? But that they have to sell to me expensive. Because there are fewer people who want this and they want it for a very different need. Yeah. So now I've walked you through needs. So what does the uh, problem statement in transportation, getting from one place to another, full marks. But that problem has been solved. Why is he saying still government not solving uh, transportation problem? Government, nahin. government, private sector, everybody not solving. Uh, why is transport problem not solved? 
uncertainty in time okay availability then government comfort very good answer comfort comfort quality quality of is comfort quality of transport speed did any of you mention speed huh safety oh so transportation problem has been solved at which level we are saying comfort nahi mil raha hai we are saying it is not safe we are saying it is uncertain when we will get the bus and when will we reach somewhere i am i am quoting you back huh has the transportation problem in bombay solved at which level basic level basic level huh oh how is it basic if safety is not there i completely agree with you maybe it says that in some parts safety is there in some parts safety is not there it is basically solving maybe one lower down i forgot to tell my joke on this uh, maslow in uh, hindi describes maslow very easily the bottom of pyramid in maslow is roti kapda aur makan ha huh? everybody gets what are fundamental needs roti kapda aur makan today's young people define that as even below roti kapda aur makan is wifi <laughs> yeah so the need change with time and depends on who so depends on who is the customer is a thread you will keep hearing from me all the time okay now how do you uncover a need you become the customer so you have transportation problem clearly in wherever you are living ha huh? in my world i have many many such issues i have basic transportation problem i can't cross my uh, the street i live opposite from iit main gate I am so scared to cross that road. Uh, so my transportation need is ki upar se koi, and they built it. They have a foot over bridge, but if I walk on that foot over bridge, two things can happen to me. Every step is eroded, so I can easily slip on any of them, and there'll be four drunk people I will see on the uh, on the walk. I'm lucky if it is four; it's more likely to be. So every kind of uh, transportation problem uh, exists. so become the customer yeah is it always the case are the problems you want to solve only the ones you are used to i want to take up robotics as a domain of work because i believe there is a large uh, uh, monetary opportunity in that if i ask my class they tell me they all want to become like physics wala i don't know how many in this room know physics wala it's the world's i think india's best known or best serving uh, a tech company for uh, poorer students in the country if i can say that huh? so they they want to be like physics wala yeah then they want to be like swiggy because swiggy is a unicorn they have any number ola is a unicorn that's easy if it has affected somebody else is the other become an anthropologist it just means in uh, when i used to work at unilever i was not allowed to open my mouth in a meeting unless i had spent 50 hours with consumers we got a license an actual published license meaning it was like a certificate let's say so if i spent 50 hours with customers then i could give my point of view publicly in a meeting otherwise i was told keep your opinion your opinion has no value till it is a customer insight please do not come and tell us there is a science to the number of time and effort or hours spent with and customers can mean stakeholders huh? customers can mean direct customers we used to work in um washing powder huh? and there the user was who washing washing machine washing powder surf excelmatic let's say who is the user but more often than not the user is a buy more often than not especially if it is surf excelmatic if it was tied it may be another and so on who is the customer who puts down money whoever is the house ka checkbook writer i'm not defining whether male or female i don't want to go there but who's got the money who's the decision maker may may not be the same person who writes the check is that a reasonable understanding yeah yeah so who do you research who do you research who do you talk to do you talk to the woman of the house who is the decision maker i'm going to say that this is not my view data says that in india more homemakers are women and therefore i'll i'll take that data point to say homemakers are mostly women in the indian context and so the decision maker is a woman the buyer is a man the user is a buy yeah so who do you talk to you talk to all 
don't have an option of not talking to. Huh? So customer became three words, user, buyer, customer. So in your problem statement, in your project, you will need to understand all three. If you are lucky, all three will be the same. In your, uh, you guys use a lot of apps, na? Who is the user, decision maker, buyer? All same. Huh? Because an app doesn't cost any money. Huh? If you had to buy a motorbike, if you had to buy an Ather bike, Gujarat is playing today evening, Ather is their uh, t-shirt. So if you had to buy an Ather bike, who is the user, decision maker, buyer? User is you, that's easy. Decision, buyer is? Father. Huh? Decision maker is the tough one. Decision maker is the tough one. Huh? Yeah. So decision maker, you think you are decision maker. Huh? Father thinks he is decision maker. Huh? And there is one poor mother in between who both of you are pulling strings saying, usko jara samjhao na, usko jara samjhao na. Huh? So, but that is the reality. There is, this is how buying happens. So you have to understand buying from all of those perspectives. Try and understand as much, talk to the customer, to learn the voice of the customer, draw pictures, create collages of people to understand who your customers are. That whether it is a problem that you have been given, whether Eantra train gave you a problem to solve or you yourself found the problem by going to a customer, it does not matter. You can create an opportunity where you have a solution first and I'll give you an example which you wouldn't have known. And then you go finding a proposition and a customer. Or you start with the market where you have a problem statement first. And then you create a proposition and then a solution. So do uh, you guys know Velcro? Velcro? Where do you think Velcro came from? It was developed as part of space technology. They were looking for something that would make it easier in a zero gravity situation. So a button and a hook and all you can't do in zero gravity. So the Velcro was a uh, invention that came up with a problem of how do we send people to space? Huh? So tell me, and then that Velcro, which was a technology that had been discovered, invented, innovated, whatever you want to call, had to go find other uses. And did it find other uses? It found so many uses. It's in your chappals, it is in my watch car thing, it is everywhere. Yeah, so it doesn't matter where the problem came from. It doesn't matter whether you first start with a solution or you first start with a problem. The thing is to map the solution and a problem for a customer. So we say that science can push or market can pull. The best innovations are those that there is some pull from the market and there's definitely some innovation from the science end. I'm showing you this only to show you how investors think. Investors want to see a large circle. They want to see that there is a large market. Huh? So we want to solve the solid waste management problem in uh, Bombay city because um, uh, it affects every one of how many two crore people who live in this city. And once we solve it for the first 100,000, we can replicate it. We can reach Bombay and then we can go to Pune and then we can go. So this is how you solve it in Pawai, which is the red dot. Then you solve it in Pawai plus, oh, you solve it in IIT, which is the red dot. Then you go to Pawai, then you go to Bombay and then you can go everywhere. So what does the investor do? The investor says, oh, in one, op one place, you meet 100,000 customers and you have a potential of making X crore rupees. And therefore, if I multiply by 100 markets, that's the size of my opportunity. Huh? So this is just a pitch ka deck, ka slide, to show how large is the opportunity. You can show the opportunity by saying 20% of the world's population suffers from this problem. Do you think you need these circles? No. And you say 20% of the world needs, I don't know what they need. I say 20% of the world today still needs food in the right place at the right time. It's not that we are creating enough food for everybody in the world. Unfortunately, people are not seeing enough profit in it to solve that problem. But you can use any methodology to say that this problem is large. And if we have a solution, we have a large market for the solution. That's all this says. TAM is total addressable market. SAM is serviceable addressable market, which is I'm in India, I can serve India. The most important for me is the red dot. 
that one customer who gives you money to buy. That red dot is one customer or a set of customers who give you money to buy. I had a student in my last course and they used uh, some version of not generative, uh, maybe generative AI to be able to collapse one semester's worth of slides into an A4 size cheat sheet. Uh, I have 30 classes in a semester, my roughly 20 slides to a class, so whatever they are, he reduces it to one cheat sheet. And for the first time, they sold it at 99 rupees to one bunch of students. That is the red dot, the first set of people who pay you for it. Without paying, there is no innovation, there is no uh, entrepreneurship. I only showed you this to, the next slide is a more important one. How do you segment customers? 3210i, uh, Anu Narsiman, 55 year old or 60 year old women who have chad gaye hain life mein and they want to, uh, so demographic means age, gender, income, occupation, family status. Those who are not rich, unfortunately don't have the luxury of nirvana. Those of us who do meditation have done the rest of it and have time for meditation. My Mari Gold customer, Mari Biscuit customer in Calcutta would tell me uh, Jharu Pocha is my exercise and Mari Biscuit is my diet. Uh, I am not like this newfangled woman who goes and does Pilates and goes and does yoga or somewhere. I don't have time for all these things. I put Jharu Pocha in the house. I am sorry, I will translate. I do Jharu Pocha at home and that's my exercise. And I eat Mari Biscuit and that's my diet. I don't know these new diets which are talking about, I don't know what these new diets are talking of. No carb, intermittent fasting, all that I don't know. I eat in moderation. Huh? So that I am using to explain demographic and psychographic. Demographic is women 30 years of age to 50 years of age. Geography, living in big cities, living in small cities, living in rural India. And psychographic means behavior. So are all, all of you are similar demographic, is that a fair comment? Most of you would be what, 18, 19, 20, something like that huh? and would be from at least tier 1 or tier 2 cities by and large, by and large and all of you are studying for a science or technology education but can you tell me on what dimensions of psychographic are you all different? So laid back versus hyper. Did anybody find a healthy, non-healthy combination? Huh? I am very surprised. I am very surprised, pleasantly surprised by how many young people are health conscious these days. Are health conscious these days. I am not even saying they are healthy. They are conscious of health. <laughs> <laughs> they may be healthy also. They may be healthy also. I am not taking that away. But when we were your age, we couldn't care about health. I mean, health was like for the old people or whatever. So health conscious, not health conscious is a psychographic variable. When you look at this bottle, what do you say? This bottle is half? Half what? Half full. Half filled. Okay, he said filled. So half of the room will say half filled or half full. The other half will say half empty. Half full, half empty is the original psychological view on people being optimistic and not being optimistic. Do you believe that tomorrow will be a better day? And everybody here in this room had better say yes to that question. If you all don't believe tomorrow is a better day, although many of you are saying that thanks to what Kavi and I have done and our generations have done, the planet is not going to have a better day tomorrow and that's fine. So do you, how, how much are you on the sustainability axis? All those are psychographic variables. Why do we use them? If you are more sustainability conscious, you will pay more money. In fact, you won't drink water from a 200 ml plastic bottle. Huh? I just did a wrong thing, but I was too uh, uh, thirsty. But you will not do this. You will carry your own bottle, huh? you, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that is psychographic profiling, which you can decide how to write your proposition. So you will start your proposition by saying you care about the earth and therefore we are bringing to you some robot which does something to save the earth, okay. So that is not targeting people based on age or uh, gender or income. It is targeting people on their mindset, is tra targeting people on their attitude. So this is, I think, where I end customer. I told you a word called valuation. I'm now going to tell you a word called value. 
Value is what companies deliver to their customers. What do you think is the value of this bottle of water? Somebody said 10 rupees, somebody said does it have to be monetary? Any other answer? Depends on where is this bottle of water being served and to whom? So the story is like this, my husband and I are driving. We are driving through Rajasthan. We have just fought for the last half an hour saying you have come underprepared. And he tells me, but that's, I thought I told you to do it. You know, like, no, I told you to do it. And we see a shop. Uh, and we see a shop and that is selling water. And it is selling cold water. What do you think I'll pay at that point of time? No, I don't know. I might pay 100 rupees for a 10 rupee bottle of water. Uh, it doesn't have to be monetary. That was a wonderful answer. Sometimes value is not monetary. Value is the what you get out of the solution service product. Huh? But very often it is easy to express in price. And price is often just a small unit of value. Value is much more than price. So if you have to ever explain value, it's the value you get by having something available to you at the moment you need it the most. This, this bottle of water as an example and like you said it doesn't have to be monetary it got us peace of mind if we had not seen that shop we would have fought for another four hours but instead we stopped fighting and blah 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 and so on right so that's value however for technical customers value comes from the product what does the product of a phone do when I want to make a call it should work when I want it to text it should it should catch signal if it doesn't catch signal do you blame phone or do you blame operator Operator. Sometimes it's also phone, but we blame operator usually. Yeah. Um, and so it has to do the function it is meant to do. If it doesn't play music uh, well enough, who do you blame? Phone or Bud or uh, Spotify. Spotify is usually not the problem. If you don't find the song you want to play, then it is Spotify's problem. If it does not play it in the quality, it's typically your phone or your speaker or your headphone or earphone or whatever car problem. So product you understand. What is the service a product offers? Does your phone offer a service? All your apps are services. Your phone came with nothing. Your phone was just a dabba. It came with the ability to text and call. But then the whole layers of software that get, got written on it, whether it was a iOS or it, whether it was Android, all those hundred apps that we all have are the service that come on top of it. Price is a value. If you sell the same product at high and low price, which is higher value? Lower price is higher value or higher price is higher value? Lower price, <laughs> Lower price is often considered higher value. And, and I know you will say depends and I will agree with you also. So lower price means I got everything I wanted and I got it in 100 rupees as against I got it in 200 rupees. But there are many types of products where higher price is higher value. And they are called experiential products. We want to show off a watch. We want to show off the clothes that we wear. And their higher price typically delivers higher value. A lot of designer clothes work on that. So price is an element of value and, and so on. So you will create value for whatever yantra you are creating. Huh? By giving it functionality, by giving it topping in the form of a service or an app or a software. And by pricing it well, at least that much. And our proposition has to be something that we do, which is us, which is the company. The customer wants it and our competitor cannot provide it. Uh, so uh, any example that, so we have on campus, there's a new uh, Chayos coming up. Uh, and so I asked my students, what is it? Why are they opening up one more? Itti sari we have so many cafes. Why are you opening one more? And the answer is all of them shut down by 9 o'clock. We need something that goes on till 3 in the morning. So what competitors don't give is timing. Hmm? But I don't know about your products. So when I come back a week or later, I don't know, a week or 10 days later, when you describe your problem for your customer, we will ask you the same questions. Why is it of value to this customer? What are you going to be building into it? What is it that others are not offering? What is it that your customer, uh, competitors are not offering? So this is not a theory class. You have to do all of this for your idea. Uh, your idea, startup, whatever you want to call it. And how do we create this value proposition? So the words here were pains. Customers have pains. They have some jobs to be done. 
and in doing those jobs they feel pain in transportation i want to go from ghatkopar to andheri and the pain i feel is lack of comfort lack of certainty lack of safety all of those are pains and then there is somebody who comes and relieves the pain so here is an example it's actually a transportation example uh can you i mean it's uber or ola i don't know who it is and i don't care i think it's uber so tell me which resonates which of these post its resonate with you individually i mean with who are, have any of you experienced these pains which one which one low cab available, low cab available. it's the biggest pain in our life jab chahiye hota hai tab gaadi nahi milti ha when you need it you don't find a cab and i know i'm going to face that problem now because at 6 o'clock there will be no uber in the streets of bombay ha huh? it's a it's a way of life ha huh? and need to book in advance have anybody faced the bad driver problem Uh, so i used to reach a stage in chennai where i tell the auto driver that you take me where you are going i will pay you and then i will find the next auto because if i told him where i wanted to go they would never come they say oh anna nagar oh no 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 i don't want to go so i tell him you tell me where you want to go i'll go halfway with you and then i'll take another one even uber in the city of bangalore i don't know uh, are any of you here from bangalore okay so the city of bangalore Uber drivers will call and ask, "Where do you want to go?" And then you have to run this algorithm in your head. That if I tell Kalla Se Palyam, he will cancel. If I tell airport, he will cancel. What is the optimum thing I should tell where he won't cancel? You know, so it is not Uber running algorithm. I am running the algorithm in my head. So only in the city of Bangalore, Uber is test marketing, where the destination is provided to the driver. Huh? In in Bombay, the destination is not provided to the driver. The driver only knows where he is picking you up. He doesn't know where he is going to drop you. For me, this bad driver is a very real problem. I gave you an auto example of Chennai, and I gave you a Uber example of Bangalore. So when I find somebody who gives me a oh, one more problem, I never carry cash. I mean, I now though I don't, but even earlier, as not a big one for carrying change at all. So in auto driver you don't have change means you are going to be paying hundred rupees for any ride. Huh? So I love the idea of not having to deal in cash. That's for me the largest pain point solved. So different pains, all of which can be solved by these are pain relievers as you can see. Then there are some which are gain creators, which in a Maslow hierarchy it is not a fundamental need, but it's a higher order need. But it makes me feel very good. Hmm? so what examples are here it says navigate trip on map which is the feature i use send it to my husband and say that you know track my ride so if i don't come don't be happy start calling policemen huh? <laughs> so yeah or automatic card payment or rating system or whatever it might be so i i'm going to show you this is another one you may not use a product like this evernote is a note writing uh, app huh? why do we write notes to remember to remember simple reason to remember ha huh? so we remember but usually you write it somewhere and it is somewhere and i don't have it at this point of time don't carry my notebook around with me all the time so the evernote is an app which you can access from your laptop you can access from your phone and it tells you it syncs across devices so the need is to remember things and it's like an external brain it syncs across devices it can include images sometimes we write notes with our hand you can scan and take a picture and upload it so there is something called a feature and something called a benefit and i'll explain that to you is a camera a feature of your phone ha huh? what is the benefit of the camera ha ah, wo to feature hi hai na what is the benefit no why do you want to take pictures memories somebody said memories or oh, you told memory before sorry i missed that so the 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 benefit of the camera is memories is capturing the moment and remembering the good things or bad things as the case may be so that is a benefit and the feature is a camera 12 megapixel is not is a feature ka feature it's the it's defining what quality of photograph you will take right so here it says benefits and features and this is what i wanted you to see and i think this is by large Google uses a patented page ranking algorithm to make money through ad placement. Is this correct or is this true or false? Is it 
making money through ad placement is this yeah okay so this is one way of writing google's proposition this is another way of writing google's proposition google is the world's largest search engine that allows internet users to find relevant information quickly and easily which of these resonates with you left hand side it resonates with you because you are an internet user so it basically a proposition answers three questions what is it uh, i don't even have to say largest search it's a search engine huh and who is it for in this case all internet users is what google service is for and why is it valuable find relevant information quickly and easily so when you work on your idea you will need to write a one single line and trust me writing one line is so tough writing a paragraph is easy getting chat gpt to write two pages even easier but we need one line and the line has to answer only these three questions what is it who is it for which is customer and why is it valuable is proposition this together makes a customer value proposition i just pulled an old one from my food days so it has a it gives you a template it doesn't just tell you what is it it says crackers are what it is so it says crackers are a tasty and healthy way to snack between meals that's the functional benefit and what is the emotional benefit it makes me feel good about snacking otherwise i usually i snack i snack all the time i had vada pav like one hour ago but i don't feel good about the vada pav khate leti hu i eat it with gusto but then i hate myself and then i again tell myself now i will not eat and then again i'll do the same thing and so on but this insight says make you feel good about snacking this is another way of writing i am very happy with this if you can write in one line what is your product service solution who is the customer it is it is targeting addressing solving the problem for and why is it invaluable often the answer will be because nobody else does that if you are in that situation you are laughing your way to the bank if you are able to say i am x i provide to all users in india something because nobody else does that you are laughing your way to the bank you are working very hard also because getting it to whatever 1.3 billion indians is also not easy but you laugh your way to the bank so this is a proposition customer value proposition that was all that i wanted to teach you and how do you identify a, a problem or an opportunity the problem is um, it is just two sides of the coin somebody's problem is your opportunity huh? and it's not um, i don't feel bad that you are um, more well, lots of people say but you are exploiting their problem but nobody else is giving them the solution what is exploiting about it i have a problem i have a transportation problem you are giving me a solution for that problem so then I, for me there is nothing exploitative in it unless you try to sell it to me for 1 million rupees or something like that but if you try to sell it to me for 1 million rupees i won't buy it i am not getting exploited so don't think that customers are being forced to buy something no customer is forced to buy anything and even if they buy it one time they'll never buy it again so people have this view of sales that it is forced down your throat you can't because paise to aapke hai na your money is you are putting down the money and even if you make the mistake once and get conned you won't make the mistake another time this is clearly one of the most important slide if the problem is not clear the rest does not matter no investor this is a pitch deck by the way this is a 12 slide pitch deck which is usually an entrepreneur makes to a investor what is the problem and how large is the problem huh? so that's what you are convince the audience why this problem needs to be solved the problem slide should be able to answer this question is there a problem that someone wants to solve or cares for is willing to pay for it occurs frequently clears creates a significant impact if unresolved and here uh pictures speak better than words so one picture is worth a thousand words so if you can find one picture to solve your problem i mean to depict your problem great the second one is how large is the problem you can choose whatever way to show how large is the problem 20% of the world faces malaria that's it i don't need to show circles i know how large the problem is yeah so this is just to say how large is the market also it tells you how will you make money who will pay 
don't have to do it for your first round. For your first round, you have to tell us the problem, how large is the opportunity or the problem, okay? And who is the customer? Describe the customer in whatever form. Huh? So, demographic, which is age, gender, income, where do they live? Psychographic, health conscious, not health conscious, uh, optimistic, um, big media consumer, distracted consumer, um, and does not focus at any point. Sorry, I'm describing, I have a 25 year old, so I know how distracted. But imagine if you were a gaming company. Do you want a distracted consumer or not a distracted consumer? You want a distracted consumer who you can distract with one more game. It's not like they have fewer ga few games that they, yeah. So who are you targeting? It goes on to tell you more. I just want you for these three or four slides. So your first review is tell us who you are. Tell us your team name. Tell us the problem you are going to want to solve. Yeah. And how large is the opportunity and who's the customer? That's it. You can do this, but it's okay. If you see further, it will then tell you do the proposition, tell us how you're going to solve the problem because abhi tak to, we have only made statements in the air. Then we'll take you to our labs and whatever and you'll actually do solutions. And then I'll teach you how to sell. So go to market. How do you sell? And how do you make money? And, and then some. So these are the 12 slides. If you Google online, you'll find some version of these same 12. So the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, fundamental, higher order, spiritual, whatever you want to call them. Then customer, we define customers by demographic segmentation, psychographic segmentation, geographic segmentation. And we describe value by using this bisleri bottle in my hand, but by functionality and by software and by price. And we wrote a proposition using only three things. What is it? Who is it for? And why is it invaluable? These slides are available to you. Thank you so much. Bye.